The purpose of this virtual tour stop is to show you some gap dynamics that occur in natural longleaf pine stands in the sandhills. So with this 360 video, let's take a quick walk around the plot, get an idea of the type of environment that we're in, just get a general feel for, for what we're seeing. But as you can see, we're in a, we're in a gap. So we're in a, a naturally formed gap. Um, it's about between a quarter and a half an acre in size. Um, it formed naturally, I can tell you that. We did not come in and do a group selection harvest in here. Uh, something happened, probably a windstorm, and it, I would expect that it happened a long time ago, uh, considering other than this one tree, which we will talk about, there's not a lot of downwitted debris in here, um, which, you know, we burn about every three years in this stand, so the trees that fell down to create this canopy gap uh, are long gone. We've probably just burned them up. But what I want to draw your attention to is by opening up this canopy gap, by, 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 by this gap being created, we've been rewarded, or the stand has been rewarded with, follow me over here, really nice regeneration of uh, longleaf pine. So we're seeing, uh, you know, if you were to actually balance that out, that's a couple hundred stems per acre of longleaf pine. Um, it's already started initiating height growth. Pretty good. I I'm happy to see this out here. And you know, what this is showing us is, is this is the type of disturbance that when we are designing um, multi-age regeneration harvesting methods like group selection harvesting or something like that, this is pretty much what we're trying to mimic. Um, you know, create a canopy gap and secure that kind of regenerate or that kind of reproduction uh, to kind of begin that regeneration process on these stands or in these stands. Um, so that's pretty much what we have going on here. And with longleaf pine being a shade intolerant species, uh, regeneration harvesting methods that put a lot of sunlight on the ground, like the creation of this gap, do oftentimes work pretty well. Um, there's some problems with them I'll get into in later videos, but what I want to point out now is this is uh, something that we're seeing in a lot of these naturally formed as well as harvested gaps uh, down here in the sand hills. is let's look at this down tree right here. Taking a look at this tree, it fell. Um, fell down actually kind of recently, it was the last couple of years, but um, it's starting to decay, but look at where it came from. It came from the edge of the gap. Now I'm going to walk back by the camera here and point out another one. There's another tree just kind of over this way that also fell down on the edge of the gap. Yet another, if we look that way, there's two more trees that are right on the edge of the gap that fell back into that forested matrix. And we're oftentimes seeing that out here. These gaps have a tendency to continue to grow and they grow outward from the edges. Those trees that are left on the edge of the gap environment after the disturbance creates the gap, for whatever reason, are more susceptible to wind throw, they get hit by or struck by lightning, things happen to those trees. Sometimes they get damaged when the gap is formed um, and the damage of those trees, you know, over time they succumb to whatever happened to them, like big scarring or something like that. But anyway, what it's showing us is that oftentimes these gaps get bigger so what we're going to do is, I look at that as, as, as some evidence of maybe we might, might want to try some type of expanding gap harvesting system on a site like this. Instead of when I do a group selection harvest coming in and taking out a gap every so often um, and then waiting 10, 15 years and then doing it again, creating new gaps, I might make the gaps a little bit bigger because based on what we're seeing on a lot of our sites down here in the sand hills, the gaps tend to be getting bigger on their own anyway. So if we can control that, maybe we're driving what the stand's doing anyway. So, actually I shouldn't say control. If we can influence that, um, maybe that might be a, a different way to regenerate stands and, and add a little complexity. Um, and honestly, I could probably use the same infrastructure, uh, same skid trails in and out and everything like that. That might save me some time. So, with that I'll, I'll shut off and make some other videos elsewhere.